Good morning from Martha's Vineyard. So I woke up this morning and thought to myself, okay, I've been here on the island just over two weeks. We've hit our groove. And I thought, how can I change things up? So I went on the Featherstone Arts Center website here on the island where they have pottery and painting and jewelry making and all kinds of great classes. I did a jewelry course last year, but I couldn't quite pull the trigger. So I went to look at the Chilmark Writers Workshop and I went on the website and sure enough, the only workshop happening on the island this summer started yesterday and my heart sunk. Interestingly, I had already decided before I came that I wasn't going to do the workshop again. Despite the fact that I had a wonderful experience last year, I thought, why did I tell myself that I didn't want to do that? And I said, oh, well, it's not meant to be. But a little voice was telling me to just try. Now, they don't usually let people come in late because you create a very private, what they call a safe container when you're in an intimate workshop like that. You're sharing very personal stories and bonding starts from day one. And I decided that I was going to call the leader of the workshop. Her name is Nancy Aroni. She's a legend on the island. And she answered the phone and I said, Nancy, this is Constance. I know I'm late. If by any chance you would allow me to enter, I would love to join today. And she said, heck yeah, you already did yesterday's exercise. Get on over here. You've got 45 minutes. And I ran upstairs, got dressed. And as I was speeding over there, I looked down at my ETA and it was 8.57, three minutes before the class starts. And she starts exactly at nine o'clock. And I thought to myself, this is such divine timing, literally and figuratively speaking. And it got me to thinking about all the times in my life when I had that same feeling. I do believe in divine timing. And the more I trust that I'm right where I'm supposed to be, the greater ease I feel in my life. And sometimes what helps me trust in divine timing is to think back on all the times that things worked out just perfectly. When I decided that I was done with Scout Talent and made the announcement to my team and started dismantling the business, Four weeks later, I found out that my sister had been diagnosed and was not going to be with us much longer. And I was fortunate to have a lot of quality time with my sister in the last six months of her life, something I won't be forever grateful for. And when my father had the car accident, I was taking a plane seven hours after I got the call to fly to Argentina for Christmas. Those are big life events, but There are many, many times in my life when I think, wow, the timing is just perfect. And I think it's important to think about that because when you are worrying and having anticipatory anxiety, it's good to be able to look back and remember that things generally work out just the way they're supposed to work out. So anyway, in the workshop, what happens on day one is you go around the circle and introduce yourself and tell people where you're from, why you're there. And then we do the prompt in class and read. The prompt is the same every year. And that's a very important moment because that's when you start to get to know people. That's when the bond and the energy of the group starts to take shape. And I was so sorry to miss it, but also grateful to be there. So today for me was all about being in listening mode until about 20 minutes before the end, someone asked me if I by chance had the piece that I had written last summer with that same prompt. It was a very beautiful reminder about why I love writing. I had basically forgotten what I had written. And interestingly, when I pulled it up, I again felt that divine timing because I wrote about my mother, my father, and my sister, and I got to have a beautiful moment of remembrance. I cried as I read it, and the group got a chance to get to know me, despite the fact that I missed day one. So I'm going to end by reading this piece to you. 
It's only three paragraphs long. If you're not interested, you can sign off now. And if you are interested, I think you'll get to know me a little bit better. So the writing prompt on day one goes something like this. Growing up in my family, the dinner table was. It was very interesting to hear what people did with that prompt. Here's mine. This piece is called Growing Pains. Dinner at our house was typical of the 60s, until it wasn't. The mood around the table was dictated first and foremost by our large and in-charge father. He worked long days at our family-owned variety store in the heart of the worst neighborhood in St. Louis, Missouri. Whatever he brought through the door set the tone at the dinner table. Even when he was tired, more often than not, he was full of stories and gregarious, contagious positivity. I think he was probably trying his best to drown out the various hormonal growing pains of four children. Or maybe relentless positivity was his way of trying to silence his own raging discomfort. We were a normal family until we weren't. The growing pains of a four-child family, five if you include Nana, played out perfectly in sync with everything that was happening in America at the time. Spiritualism brought tofu and brown rice and sprouts. Racism, war, civil strife, drugs, and rock and roll music brought the menace of my brother being called to Vietnam and my sister dating a black man and then going brawless as she efforted to make friends with her queerness. Mom and dad were out of their comfort zone. I pretty much lost all memory of my early childhood the day I heard my quiet, unassuming mother screaming my sister's name. We were waiting for my father to come home from work. I was watching Leave it to Beaver. Mom was making dinner. Pam, Pam, Pam. My heart formed a lump in my throat as my mother broke down the bathroom door. Pam lived. My seven-year-old voice still gets stuck in my throat over 50 years later. One by one, my siblings left home until I was left alone with my parents and Nana. That is when my memories begin, when I began to learn about prayer, intuition, and my higher self. Nana learned too. Nana died, I left for college, and my parents sold the store and a house full of loving memories to pursue their spiritual path out west. I hope you enjoyed that. That's all for now. Until next time, from my heart to yours. <laughs>